All right, scientists, today we are going to talk about how to calculate the catalase activity that we measured in lab from our fish, beef, or carrot samples. The first thing to think about um, is how we're going, what we're going to be calculating. Uh, so to begin, we're going to be calculating the activity in international units, or IU, international units. And this is really the micromoles of, um, of reaction per minute. Uh, and you can think of this as being um, like the increase in product or the decrease in substrate. Um, but really, however we're measuring it, it's going to be the micromoles of reaction that occur per minute. Um, and in the case of our catalase experiment, we're going to be starting by thinking about the ideal gas law, PV equals nRT, where P, of course, is the pressure, V is the volume of the gas we're thinking about, N is the number of moles of gas, R is the gas constant, and T is the temperature in Kelvin. For the purposes of our experimental analysis, we're actually going to rearrange what we're looking at here and measure or rearrange this to say um, N equals PV over RT. So uh, we can measure the P. And so let's say on the day of our experiment, we measured the pressure of um, the science building to be at 0 0.997 atmospheres. And of course, there are plenty of online converters that can get you from millimeters of mercury to atmospheres, um, etc. There's lots of ways we can convert, interconvert between different units of pressure. We also need a value for V, for volume. In the case of our experiment, recall we were using the little paper discs soaked with catalase or soaked with our enzyme solution. And then we were watching oxygen bubbles build up on those paper discs um, to rise, to raise this little disc up to the surface. And it's really those oxygen bubbles that are our product of the reaction. So what we wanna be measuring is the volume of oxygen bubbles. And uh, I've told you in our protocol that we're gonna estimate this to be about 10 microliters of oxygen bubbles for each disc that's, that rises up. Microliters are good units, but let's convert this to liters. 10 microliters, we can just convert, say one liter is equal to 10 to the sixth microliters. That gives us 10 times 10 to the minus six liters of oxygen that are being produced. We also need the temperature. Uh, and we uh, will estimate that in lab on this imaginary day, we had 19 degrees C. In order to convert to Kelvin, we have to add 273, and that gives us a total final temperature of 292 Kelvin. So last but not least, we need the appropriate gas constant. Uh, and the gas constant is going to combine units um, of all of these different uh, variables here, but we wanna have one that includes atmospheres, um, liters, Kelvin, and, and moles, where'd our moles go? Well, moles here are in N. Okay, so the R value we're gonna use in this equation is 0 0.0821 liter times atmosphere over mole K. Again, there are lots of different versions of the gas constant online, but this is the one we're gonna be using today since it uh, uses atmospheres uh, instead of some other unit of pressure. All right, let's put all of these variables together so we can calculate the moles of oxygen gas that were produced in this reaction. All right, so we'll say N equals 0 0.997 atmospheres times 10 
times 10 to the negative 6 liters divided by 0 0.0821 liter per atmosphere over mole K times the temperature 292 Kelvin. We can cancel out a lot of the units here, so let's do that. Liter, liter, K, K, and that just leaves us with moles as our units left. And if we multiply that out, you can do the math, but uh, the number that I get from this is 4.16 times 10 to the negative seventh moles of O2 gas. All right, so we've got moles of gas, but if you look up in this uh, definition of the activity in international units, it's in micromoles. Uh, so we need to convert now our moles to micromoles. Of course, that's easy to do up here. Um, we can say 10 to the sixth micromole is the same as one mole, cross, cross. And that's gonna give us a value of 0 0.416 micromoles of O2 gas. Woohoo! So now we've calculated how much oxygen gas was generated by the catalase enzyme in order to lift this little disc up through the hydrogen peroxide. But in order to calculate the activity of the enzyme, we also need to consider how quickly that gas was produced. So let's take this value and we'll move on to another page of calculations. Okay, so I've just moved this value of N, uh, how much oxygen gas we produced thanks to using the ideal gas law. What we want to do now is convert this into uh, international units, into activity, of micromoles per minute. Now, in this example, it took 32 seconds for the disc to rise from the bottom to the top of our flask of hydrogen peroxide. And of course, your time will differ depending on what you measure. So really, we have 0.416 micromoles of gas per 32 seconds. But again, that's not minutes, so let's convert it. 32 seconds out of 60 seconds uh, is the same as 0 0.533 minutes. So 32 seconds, just over half a minute, that makes sense. What we really have now is the international units, 0 0.416 micromoles of oxygen gas in 0 0.533 minutes. We can simplify that down, divide uh, numerator and denominator by 0 0.533, and we'll end up with 0 0.780 micromoles of oxygen per minute. They're just the same units as our international units. That's what we've calculated. This is the enzyme activity of the catalase in this little disk. But wait, there's more. We actually diluted the catalase uh, 1 to 500 before doing this experiment. So that meant uh, that means we need to multiply this international unit uh, number by 500 to represent what the actual concentration or the actual activity of catalase in your sample actually is. So let's say then 0. 780 times 500, that gives us an international unit value of 390. So what we've calculated here is that in your tube of catalase enzyme uh, source, we've got 390 IU of activity of catalase. Now, we didn't actually measure uh, the entire tube, right? We only measured five microliters of the catalase uh, sample. And so that's where the relative activity comes in. Relative activity uh, refers only to the thing we sampled. And in this case, that's five microliters. 
Relative activity can be defined as uh, the IU per enzyme volume in mils. Well, we can set that up. We can say 390 IUs, I'll say relative activity is 390 IUs divided by five microliters, but we wanna convert that to mils. So let's say 10 to the third microliters is the same as one mil. That calculates out to 78,000 IU per mil. So if we were to test every last ounce of catalase that was present in our little tube, uh, we would have 78,000 uh, international units of catalase activity per mil. Okay, but now let's think about total activity. Total activity means what would happen if we tested the entire sample of, um, or the entire you know fillet of fish or beef liver or entire carrot. This is something we would care about um, when we're thinking industrial scale enzyme production. If I use the enzyme activity from the entire source, how much enzyme activity would I have? So in order to calculate total activity, we take the relative activity multiplied by the volume of our total enzyme extract. In the example we're talking about here, we have 12 mils of enzyme extract. So let's calculate out the total activity. Total activity equals 78,000 multiplied by, oh, well, IU per mil, multiplied by 12 mils. That gets us to 936,000 international units if we were to use the entire, for example, the entire beef liver extract. Final calculation. Beef liver, of course, or any of these enzyme sources doesn't originally exist uh, in liquid form. Instead, it exists um, with something that has a mass uh, in grams. So we can evaluate that by saying total activity per gram of the tissue that was used. So that's going to be 936,000 IU. And in the example we're working today, there were 5.22 grams of beef liver used. So if we multiply that out, you get 179,000 international units per gram of tissue. So we've calculated a lot of things here. First of all, we calculated the total uh, volume, or the total number of moles, rather, of oxygen gas that were produced uh, by our catalase sample. And then in order to really calculate the international units, that is the micromole per minute of enzyme activity, we had to include the amount of time that it took for those uh, moles of oxygen to be produced. That is the amount of time it took to get from the bottom to the top of the um, hydrogen peroxide. So our international units, our activity is 0 0.780 micromoles of oxygen per minute. And because we had diluted that sample, uh, so this is the activity of the diluted sample, if we wanted to think about um, what the activity would be in the undiluted sample, um, this would be 390 IU per minute. Okay, so the relative activity is uh, thinking about how much we actually sampled, that is only five microliters of the entire sample. Uh, and we can use that to sort of extrapolate up to what would be present 
in our entire tube. So like the one mil sample, um, for example, that you took from the jar. Okay, our relative activity is in international units per mil. So we can calculate that out. And then last but not least, uh, total activity is more like something you'd want for um, industrial purposes. If I use the entire extract from that liver, how much uh, volume would I have, or how much activity would I have? And we can calculate the international units present um, in the liquid solution and the international units uh, considering the grams of tissue that were ground up to produce this enzyme. Lots of good calculations here. Hope this helps you out.